Hey there guys. So I know I give a lot of crap towards Intel's Alder Lake N and Twin Lake processors to the point where I get accused of being an AMD fanboy and I really just don't think that that is an accurate assessment. And while I do have a lot of criticisms of the N100, the N95, the N150, there are legitimately aspects of them that I like. And right now I'm gonna show you guys what things I like to do with these types of mini PCs. Because because there are scenarios where they absolutely excel, and for that we're going to be using this Tricu Mini PC. This is their WI6 model, and it is rocking an Intel N150, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and a 512 gigabyte SSD. And it is one of my more favorite designs for these types of mini PCs because of the slender design that they go with. It's very, very slim. One of the things that I like to use these mini PCs for is essentially as media consoles. So usually underneath a TV, usually in the living room room or a bedroom and because of that the very slim profile that we're working with here is very nice it can fit in a lot of locations and I do always appreciate it when a company is willing to make their product longer so that it would have essentially a skinnier profile if we look at it compared to other mini PCs that are rocking similar hardware you can see here that the average mini PC does tend to be taller and because of that tallness sometimes you will struggle to put these underneath the TV if it's just on its stands and and even smaller lower profile mini PCs like this one do tend to be taller so even in those scenarios this would still struggle to get underneath some TVs. I've literally never run into any problems with these small slim ones so that's specifically why I like this Tricu one. Another big advantage that it has is that it has a USB type C in the front. You don't see type C in a lot of mini PCs that have the N100 and the N150. So overall it's a fantastic design. My biggest complaint really is the fact that on the back you had two HDMI instead of one of those being a display port but I'm more forgiving of that because the scenarios where I end up using these systems in I don't ever really need a display port I've never had a TV with display port I don't think I'm ever going to have one so HDMI really is all that I care about there but let's get this thing hooked up so I can show you how I like to get these things set up so the first thing that I do is I pretty much go through the process of installing Windows IT Enterprise edition and of course I use a local account I pretty much just like to use a extremely bare bones version of Windows because I never really need to use any kind of Windows applications on systems like this and what I end up finding is that with Windows IOT there's a pretty big benefit for these lower end systems I mean the this is only quad cores without hyper threading so Windows doing a lot of things in the background can really end up eating in to your CPU cycles. And with IoT, a lot of those problems are pretty much eliminated. But of course, now I have to go through the entire process of installing all the drivers that are necessary for this system. But if you're wondering, no, it doesn't increase the performance. Running Cinebench R23, it scored pretty much identically to where it did before. And it's well within the level of performance that you should expect out of the N150. Windows IoT isn't really about getting more performance in this sense that the maximum performance of your system somehow increases. It's more about freeing up your limited resources for day-to-day -day tasks. And really, the biggest thing that I like about it is the fact that you don't get the annoying Windows updates. You pretty much only get Windows updates when they're stable. And considering that this is a system that is more likely to live underneath a TV than anything else, at least for my use cases, I really would rather just have those updates out of the way. But look, one of my favorite things to use these mini PCs for is essentially as clients for Moonlight. I have Apollo installed on my gaming desktop and I essentially stream that desktop over my network and these little mini PCs are really powerful for this kind of thing. So I can do the full 1440p of the display that I have. I can do 144 hertz and the performance like this is incredible. I love putting systems like this around the house so that I can pretty much stream my main desktop onto any display in this whole place. So if I want to pull up a game in the living room, if I want to pull it up in the bedroom, in any of the bedrooms, if I want to pull it up on my phone, on my tablet, on any device, I'm able to do that. And at the price point that these 
Alder Lake N systems end up coming in, especially this Triku one, it's just a no-brainer to pick these things up. I mean, I'm playing this game right now at almost 144 hertz. The only limiting factor here is just the level of performance that I'm getting on my main PC. And this little system is handling it perfectly fine. I'm having absolutely no issues. And this is at a 1440p display, 1440p, 144 hertz stream. And it is a perfect gaming experience. And look, while my main gaming PC does have 2.5 gigabit ethernet, this little system is only gigabit, which means that's the weakest link in the whole chain here. And I'm still having a spectacular experience here. I could easily play through this game without any problems whatsoever. So why would I spend any more money for a mini PC to put in my living room or in my bedroom than this? I can go onto Amazon right now and pick up this system on sale. I could probably get three of these for the cost of, say, a Zen 3 based mini PC. With that said though, the same thing that makes Moonlight such a good experience on these little systems is the same thing that makes them really great as systems for recording with OBS. Here I'm playing Spider-Man on my laptop that has an RTX 4050 and that is displaying over HDMI to a USB capture card that is hooked up over the USB-C port on this little Triku mini PC. And I'm able to record this gameplay at 1080p 60 without any issues whatsoever. Now I will say though that high resolution recording at high re frame rates is really not going to be all that doable. I tried 4K 60, it was a stuttery mess. But 1080p 60 and 1440p 60 seemed to work perfectly fine, it was just 4K that was giving me issues. I'd have to test this out on Linux to really know if this is just a limitation of the hardware or if this is more of a Windows problem. But what's great about this is that if you've ever wanted wanted to start a benchmarking channel or just record gameplay of any consoles or any devices that you have. You can get a device up and running that will handle all of that recording perfectly fine for not a lot of money because it's better to use an external device and then your main device because if you use your main device, the, the same thing that you're going to be using for gaming. If it's say a console, there's going to be very big limitations in terms of quality and in terms of how you can record stuff or if you're using something like shadow play or amd or intel's built-in capture features what that is doing is that's using up your performance so if you're playing an intense game like say something like escape from tarkov you're going to see some severe performance drop in either obs or in tarkov depending on which thing you gave the biggest priority in windows and you can solve all of these problems by just getting a hundred hundred and twenty dollar mini pc and pair that with a $50, $60 capture card. But all of those are really the main things that I like to use these little N150 and N100 mini PCs for. Yeah, it's not the most extensive list, but it is a very basic system. Really, I mostly rag on the N150 and the N100 because of just how low end they are in comparison to other things around the same price point. And also because of the fact that Windows 11 is just such a heavy operating system for this type of hardware. You know, if you go down the route of installing Windows IoT, that does make it a more usable experience, but really, in my opinion, you should just go down the Linux route. Mostly because not only is the Linux desktop experience fantastic with these types of systems, it also just makes it easier to turn one of these things into both a home server and a day-to-day -day computer. With Docker, you can kind of just do whatever it is that you want. And while, yes, you can get Docker working on Windows, it's a lot more annoying to do and you get more benefits from going onto Linux anyway. But really, my main uses for these types of systems is essentially just media players for Plex and Moonlight clients, and for that, they're pretty much fantastic. I don't even really bother with any type of Android or really ARM-based media player in general just because of how locked down they are in comparison to a system like this. Best part is for the types of tasks that I use these things for, I don't need a 16 gigabyte version. I can pretty much get away with practically anything. Four gigabytes of RAM might be pushing it, but for sure eight gigabytes is more than fine. But anyways, I'll catch you guys in the next one.